What's going on guys? It's your boy Saw Trades. Um, had some free time on my hands and I figured I'd shoot a little video uh, going over some of the trades that we took on the day. So let's get into it. Uh, GMBL, really nice trade here. Um, took a little paper cut on this name. You guys can see right over here. Uh, started adding into this, you know, VWAP area. We break below VWAP and that's when I cut the position right away for a quick break even. Uh, fast forward a little, we kind of trade sideways. That's when I noticed we formed this wedge. And right over here, as soon as we broke over this wedge, this upper trend line, we got the one minute retest and that's where I added into this position. I got my first ads on this name. You find the order. Got my first ads, 14 threes right over here. We get a nice shove into 15, take some profit off into 15, take more off into 16. And then we kind of come down over here and that's when we form this kind of three minute flag look. Right over here, you guys could see, you know, high volume push, low VPA pullback into the previous high area. So now we're holding it as support. So I go ahead and add some more right over here at 16 cents. I smack it a few times at 16. Then we get a nice shove into 17s. And I peel my position off 17. Then I got one more order up here. And then I, excuse me. And then I take the rest off at 17 right up here. I'm going to go over to the one minute so you guys can see how it looks. So we get that push in a 17, peel the rest off right here. Then we kind of come, we start coming down, you know, we start trading sideways. Then I'm like, okay, hey, you know what? I want to start building a position into this one. I'm going to slowly scale in. I think we get another push to high a day. So right over here, you guys can see, I start adding over here 15s. I get some ads here at 15.6, get a little bit on at 16. And then ultimately I wanted to risk off a of VWAP. Why? Because I already had small size in this. I just had a starter on in the position told myself if we get down to VWAP, I'll be comfortable adding the rest of my position. That's exactly what happened. We come down into VWAP, I start adding more into my position. I add a lot more 14.4. And then we get a nice push into our upper trend line right here of 15.75 area. Take some off 15.3. Take more off 16 cents right up into here. And then I take more off into 17 right up here. Then as we start pulling back, I'm telling myself, okay, hey, I got to start managing my risk in case this starts breaking down and flushing. So I sell some here into 16s. Then finally, when we get below the trend line, I say, okay, hey, I'm going to take another piece off. Took some more off at 15 here. Then we're going into the close and I'm telling myself, okay, hey, we have, you know, this good support area. We've clearly been respecting it. Let's take some into after hours and see if we get that push. Uh, so, you know, after hours comes, we get a nice push through 17s into 18s, take some off at 18 into the ask, and then we get a nice push here into 23s. I take my last piece off at 23 cents. We were able to walk out of this one from 14 cents with a 55% gain on GMBL. So really nice trade here. Uh, slowly build in a position into it now, added some here, some here, some here, and added some more here. Um, I want to take this into tomorrow. And the reason I want to take this into tomorrow is because if this can speed up here, I'll be able to show you. We have this really nice gap on the daily that we're currently trading in. Um, I wanna see us hold 19 cents. 19 cents is gonna be that gap level that we need to hold. And we have a gap fill all the way at 32 cents. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how we react tomorrow. You guys can see we bounced off of 19 perfectly. That's right where I got some more ads in. So I'm most likely gonna hold this tomorrow depending on how we close out at the end of the day, which is going to be around 8 p.m. And we'll decide from there. But as of right now, I will be taking this into tomorrow. Um, another trade on the day is COSM. COSM, really nice five-minute flag. Um, right when we entered this flag, we got some buyback news. So that was really nice. Uh, we enter this flag, $5.42. And you guys can see we're on the five-minute you guys could see a high volume push, low VPA pullback, but you might you might be thinking, okay, where's he coming up with these pivots? 535 level, very simple. Let's look left. We have a high over here of 535 that we couldn't break. We have a high over here, 535 that we couldn't break. We come up here in a 530s, we could not break. Come up here again, we could not break. Come up here again, we could not break. So now I'm looking for the 530 break and flag. Uh, pretty funny, 535 right over here also lines up with the high of this 5-minute candle. So we get the nice volume push up through it and then low VPA pullback into it to confirm it as support. Um, so what do I do after I see this? I'm telling myself, okay, hey, 535 is good support. That's definitely going to be the risk point. 
we need to get ourselves into a position as close as we can to 535 and risk off of 535. It's very, very simple. So I noticed this low VPA pullback in a 535 area. I noticed bidders are stepping in. And so I'm like, okay, game time. Let's get some on and let's see if we get a nice push up. So I get long on this name, 542. Smacked it a few times right here. And we get a nice push into high a day. Peel some off 552. And then the buyback news hits the tape and this thing goes parabolic. We get a massive move all the way up into sixes for the quick halt. And right out of, right out of the unhalt, um, we get this massive push here. I peel some off into 652s. And then I kind of let a little piece ride. You know, we're kind of just trading sideways now. And I don't know why the arrow is not showing up. That's weird. The arrow is not showing up. Um, but I did take my last piece off at $6.29. So I kind of let it, you know, hang out around here. I was looking for that next leg up. And I take it off. Where is it? Right, right here. I'm looking at my orders on my other screen, and it would have been right in this area at six dollars and twenty-nine cents as we're coming down. Uh, don't know why the arrow is not here, um, but I did take my last piece off right over here at six dollars and twenty-nine cents. So Cosm, really nice, uh, beautiful five-minute flag to go along with that buyback news. Five forty-two, six fifty-two, final take at six thirty-two. This was a sixteen percent gain. So really, really, really nice trade. Um, BXRX, been seeing this theme late, uh, this, this, you know, pattern lately, going to go over it real quick. Not really a pattern, more of just, you know, um, so these stocks that put in this massive move in pre-market, they're usually going to unwind and just fade off during the day. And that's exactly what I said in the morning. BXRX probably fade all day after open. And sure enough, it faded all day after open. Um, I did play it over here. I did take some here at $4.20, got a nice move into 4.30s. I was looking for a Grom type move because towards the end of the day, Grom was starting to open up and Grom kind of had the same pattern. Kind of had that, we'll show you Grom right now actually. So you guys see BXRX, nice, you know, move all pre-market, fade all day. And then when I show you Grom, you guys could see a nice move pre-market, fade all day. And then this was Grom at the end of the day. So I was kind of expecting a move just like this on bxrx but it did not come uh grom real quick though we do have a five minute flag we're not really the cleanest i believe i was looking at this on the 10 yeah so we have a nice 10 minute flag vpa is not really the cleanest but i kept noticing on the smaller time frame which would be the one minute that we kept bouncing off of this 330 area so i'm like okay hey if we get a dip you know into this 325 area which is the initial morning high right over here i told myself that i would get some uh, so we have a nice dip into the 330 area, picks them up 338, get a nice move right up here in the 350s. I peel it off completely at $3.51 for a quick scalp. So a nice win there on that little uh, little 10 minute flag look. Wasn't really the cleanest VPA, but I was just going in for a quick scalp and we were able to walk out green on that one. Uh, another trade that we took on the day was BIAF. Go over BIAF real quick. Really clean five minute flag. Um, so we have this, you know, every, every time we're coming up here, we're kind of, you know, getting smacked down. So I put BFIA can set up for short squeeze. They short and no follow through watching closely. So you can see right here, nice push fails, nice push fails, nice push fails, nice push. And right here, it doesn't fail. You can see they're trying to bring it down, but it doesn't fail. Also has that low VPA stair step effect. And then we get the massive move higher. So shorts are now trapped. Shorts are in this. They're like, oh crap, what are we going to do? And this is where the short squeeze takes effect. So this one over here, I see this nice five minute flag here into this 295 $3 daily pivot area. And these little zones are just from wick to body. Kind of how I, you know, keep my emotions in control when I'm in the trade. Kind of let myself know, okay, hey, if we crack three, we do have this 295 body of the candle, which should act as support as well. And you guys could see we kind of bounce off of it perfectly. Same thing right here, 345s to the body, 330s. You guys can see later on we bounce off of it like many times perfectly. So kind of just the way I keep myself sane. Anyways, um, let me pull up the orders. So we get long on this flag at 309 right into here. So we get some on at 309. Then we have this flush into our lower trend line, also 295s. And that's where I start adding heavily. I add 298s, 299s. Then we get a nice pop here into three 
uh, 308s. Peel some off here into 308s. We had a high of 320. Let me go on to the one minute. That way you guys could see all the skills. Uh, we got another push here in a 318. Peel some off there. Get another push here in a 320s. Peel more off 320. Then right over here, I noticed we had this upper trend line. So now I'm thinking to myself, okay, hey, we got a nice gain out of this so far. Let's peel some more off just to mitigate some risk. Just in case we reject here and shorts try to hit it and we start coming back down. Why would I want to close it out for a break even if I can, you know, take some more profit off up here and then hold the rest to see if we get that follow through move. Um, so we get that move into 330s. I peel some more off 326. Then we kind of, you know, trade down and I'm like, okay, hey, we need to hold this one minute pivot of 313. We hold it perfectly. Uh, you can see low VPA pullback coming into that area. Buyers step in and we get a high volume push all the way into 360s. And this is where I take more profit at $3.40 coming up into this area right over here. Then I take more off at $3.60 right up here. I remember I had a limit set there. Then we get this push in a four and I'm holding my last piece for the four break. Um, I really wanna see this four break. I really wanna see this extension. I was looking for the halt. Ultimately, it did not happen. We did get a push in a four. I didn't take any off. And then right here, I told myself, okay, hey, if we crack 374 and we close below 374, which is this previous high area, I'm going to close my position. So we crack 374, we close below it. And once this candle opens, I take my remaining piece off at $3.60. We did come up back into this area of 390s, but we did form a lower high. That's when I got this uh, trend line drawn and you could see it was respected all day long, tried to break here, tried to break out multiple times and eventually failed. Um, really nice trade here, was able to walk out with a 32% gain at the highs. Um, and then GNS, this was also a trade on the day. Um, uh, GNS, so this was a supply and demand trade. So let's go to the demand real quick. So we have rally base rally now this is an established demand zone. Okay, so then we come up, you know, we have our rally base rally. Now we have our drop, I'm sorry, right here, drop, base, drop. So now this demand area has turned into supply. And then moving forward, you see we come up into supply and we get rejected. So now when we form this five minute flag over here, I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this 530 area and it worked out perfectly. So we get a break through this 490 uh, pre-market resistance area. I believe I went too far back there. Uh, 490 resistance area here, you see it was support, turned into resistance. Finally break through it here with a high volume push. Then we get that low VPA pullback into, into $5, 490 area to confirm it as support. You guys see high volume push, low VPA pullback. And I tell myself, okay, clean flag. Gonna get in as close as I can to this 490 area and risk off of 490. Um, so I get my ad in at, pulling up my chart one second. I get my add in right over here, five dollars and one cents. We get a pop into 508s. Peel some off 508. Where is it at? Right over here. Peel some off 508. We kind of consolidate down here, and you know I'm, I took some off, so now I'm just you know just relaxing. Okay, hey, if we break 490, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my position for a break even. Uh, Would have been you know the reason I say break even is because I've already taken a piece off, and if this does go red. It will basically just wipe those profits away and I'll walk out for a break even. It won't actually be um, a red trade. Uh, so we then get a push here into 516s. I peel some off 515. Then we get another push into our 530 area and that's where I peel my last piece off, $5.27 right over here. Then you can see the supply zone worked out to a T. I did tell myself, okay, if we get this break over 550 and then, you know, we kind of... So here's what I was looking for after I sold out. Um, for the next trade, I was looking for us to kind of rally into this area, consolidate, and then rally again. And then that would kind of confirm this as a demand zone. Why would it confirm it as a demand zone? Because we would have a rally, base, rally. We would rally, we would consolidate, and then we would rally higher. Then I would expect this kind of effect here to come back down, retest the zone, and bounce off of it, but have that follow through. That would kind of confirm it as a demand zone for me. Um, I, you know, obviously that didn't happen. That's just my game plan for the future when I was in this trade. Um, but we did end up fading off, so the supply zone was still intact, and we ended up selling off for the rest of the day. Um, didn't capture the percentage gain on this one, but I can actually tell you what it was right now. So we got long 501 right here. We took our final piece off 527. 
So that was a 4.82% 4 gain. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, those are my trades on the day. As always, if you guys find this information helpful, give me a follow on Twitter. Soft trades is with an underscore at the end. You guys can see I post a lot. I'm very active, always sharing ideas. Um, send me a DM if you want to join the Discord room as well. Give me a follow on Twitter. Drop a like and a subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And we will catch everyone uh, tomorrow for tomorrow's recap. Peace.